Welcome to the Borderlands Trail and Ultra Running Podcast. My name is Josh Rosenthal. I'm the host. I'm also the founder of Borderlands Trail Running. And today we've got Lars Peterson from Say Sky Running. I've been hunting Lars down for a while and I'm stoked to have finally got him. Borderlands, somehow we're still not learning. Borderlands, we still suck at running. Today I'm coming to you from my apartment in Paris. It's kind of loud outside. I, I live in the 6th arrondissement. There is loud vehicles and loud people, and it just is what it is, so you'll hear some of that in the background today. Uh, you can expect to learn the history of Say Sky from a, uh, through the eyes of the, its founder, Lars Peterson, a really great guy. Really enjoyed this conversation. It's just the sort of thing that makes you love this sport more and more, knowing that the people behind the brands that we love um, are really good people and enjoyable people. But this brand, if you're an American, this brand might be new to you, and so I'm excited to, to put it on your radar maybe for the first time today. When I would go on park runs in Copenhagen, I mean, 50%, sometimes upwards of like 99% of the runners I would see would be wearing Say Sky. I mean, Copenhagen really is proud of, of a brand, its brand that came from there in Say Sky, and Lars from just north of, of Copenhagen. But even though... The, the Danish have, have really owned it and clearly love it. It's very much an international brand in 60 countries, and it deserves to be on your radar. And I've got more conversations like this coming up with some really interesting people in the industry, from Taylor Bowden, who, who works for Believe in the Run. He's going to be joining me on some podcasts where we do some deep dives into the history of some shoe shoe brands. Like, I haven't done much gear on this podcast, and so I reached out to Thomas over at Believe in the Run and said, hey, would you join me? Would someone from your team join me for some podcasts where we go into deep dives on gear and the history of gear? And so we're going to do an episode all about Solomon with Taylor Bowden, more episodes with uh, Wolf Runner, my, my guy, Brian Peterson. I'm going to do a deep dive into the, the trail running capital of North America. Like I like to say that it's Salt Lake City. I like to hope that it's Salt Lake City someday. But who is it now? We're just going to have some fun and we're going to track down who it is now. So I hope that you'll follow the podcast uh, so you don't miss any of these episodes that are coming up. And this podcast is brought to you by Victory Insoles, V-K-T-R-Y dot com slash Borderlands. Look into their insoles. I love them because they add some energy to my run. They literally, I just feel like they literally give me a little bit more pop in my step. I feel like I can go further and faster uh, when I'm wearing them. They did take a little bit of getting used to, uh, but once I once I got used to them, I absolutely loved them. And I was stoked then to to get a relationship with Victory. So click that link in the show notes or in the bio of any of our socials and check them out. Give them an honest look, an honest, an honest once over. And if you're looking for insoles or even if you're not, check them out. Consider it because if you are, I think these are the best out there. All right, without any further ado, here's my new friend Lars Peterson coming to us from Copenhagen while I sit in Paris. And even with all those miles, we're still connected by the great sport of running and trail running. And I really hope you enjoy this. I absolutely enjoyed it myself. As a lot of you may know, I spent uh, six weeks this summer, and then like a couple of years ago, I spent another six weeks in Copenhagen. And I think um, I think very highly of Copenhagen for a number of reasons that I could get into some other time. But I think among the top is that it's a it's a city that one does handles kids really well. I've got three kids, and so it's a really great place to be with kids. There's like hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of parks. It's very inviting, and it's the local people of Copenhagen are just tremendously hospitable and kind. And, you know, my Danish is very, very, very bad. And uh, the locals don't mind uh, speaking English with me. And I, so I appreciate that. Uh, but I also was, uh, you know, going there to run and some have time, have time with my family and prepare for this year in Paris. And there's, there's no way around going to Copenhagen, going on a run and not seeing at least 50, 60, 70, up sometimes is 100% of the runners with one brand on their shirt. And that brand was Say Sky. And I think in America, we've seen it. And I don't know, Lars is going to help us understand this. I don't know if there's been strategic ad buys, really good campaigns. But, I, you know, if Copenhagen is, is one of the other amazing things of Copenhagen is the design. I mean, the design is everywhere. You can go to a furniture museum if you want to geek out on furniture. You can go to an architectural museum on the water that's the building is stunning of course 
uh, but there's, it's, there's a celebration of design. And so what I love about today and why I'm super excited to have Lars Peterson here with me today is to, to talk about Say Sky and how it came to be, how it formed, what it is now, how did they get everywhere in Copenhagen and what's happening with them in America and in other, other markets. And so before we go into all that, first, Lars, welcome. Thank you for being here. I appreciate you. That was a long, sweet, uh, nice speech, uh, both about Say Sky, also like uh, from my beloved uh, home city, uh, Copenhagen. Yeah, thank you very much for the kind words. It's much yes, appreciate. my pleasure. So tell me about, um, I mean, you are you from Copenhagen? Were you raised in Copenhagen? I was actually raised in Copenhagen. I, I'm from 40, 40 minutes drive outside Copenhagen. Um, and when I was finishing uh, high school or college, uh, so around the 18 years old, uh, I moved to uh, Copenhagen and I, I've been living here ever since. Yeah. Um, okay. Are you from the forest in the north? Is it 40 minutes to the north? Yeah, it's in the north. So I was closer to the sea. Um, and that's also where maybe we go into that. Uh, that my my main my my main sport originally was uh, was windsurfing. Uh, so mm-hmm. and obviously Denmark being a, a very uh, very we have a lot of sea. So 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 we're strong in sailing. This is where this is where we can shine when it gets to the Olympics. <laughs> yes, I uh, man, we we spent a uh, a good bit up, and I'm gonna say I'm gonna butcher this pronunciation. I'm just gonna warn you in advance. Frederiksberg. Yeah, I'm from Frederiksberg. That's exactly where that's I'm it. From. Okay, that's where I spent. I spent a good bit of time in Frederiksberg. I mean, there's yeah. that nice little main street. We were just outside. There's a so there's a lake, yeah. and we were just kind of we were real close to that lake before oh, okay. we went up north to yeah. um, all the beaches. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's it. No, but so so we are close to the beaches, and it was a nice place to grow up. Uh, everything was. Uh, so pretty nice and calm, uh, but obviously also either uh, you move straight away uh, when you finish college or you stay there forever, yeah. I guess. Um, I yes. guess that goes for a lot yeah. of I'm from a similar town in America that's very small and you either, it, yeah. most people kind of get out and go when it yeah. comes time for college. Yeah, but that's it. No, but that's it. Yeah. So when you went into Copenhagen, um, you know, let's say you... you were were you immediately into running? Did you come by way? Did you come into running so by windsurfing? But yeah. were you a triathlete? Like what what was your journey toward running? Uh, yes, uh, yeah. It, it, the story is is, is long and not and not that uh, straight. So so I've been professional windsurfing and I've been seven seven years on the national team. Um, uh, I uh, so when I moved to, to Copenhagen, uh, I was obviously already windsurfing and so on and. Uh, uh, I needed a, a job after college to, to earn some money before I could uh, go training for the winter in Australia. So, so that was pretty much why I moved to, to, to Copenhagen. I'm from a divorced family, so my father lived in Copenhagen and my mother lived uh, in my what do you call it, home birth town, uh, home birth mm-hmm. uh, house. Uh, mm-hmm. no, so on, it wasn't. So I picked up. Uh, so I stopped. My, I did my last World Championships, World Cup, and so on in, in 2004. And I got the chance to run uh, New York Marathon in 2007. Okay. So, 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 yeah. Now it, it seems like it doesn't seem like ages away, but when you when you start counting the years, it's like ages away, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so 07 was the marathon, and then I mean, did that did that just hook you into running, or did you arrive into Say Sky? From just seeing a business opportunity, were you were you no, a no, business no. minded so, person? So, so, no, so, uh, let me um, so so after I finished that the whole competition thing in uh, in the windsurfing b- business, so you can say, and I've been in windsurfing and involved in surfing, quicksilver, uh, rip curl, so on. Uh, I would say almost almost li- all my life since I was pretty much twelve, I think. Um, wow. And I missed I missed the competition and I missed like going all out. Uh, the, the the form of windsurfing I was doing was uh, racing. So it was, it's, they, we were getting high poles at, at some stages, right, uh, at doing, doing every race. So I missed that whole thing, and I missed the competition, and I uh, thought, like, okay, maybe running can do that because then I can compete against myself. I can keep finish uh, compete against times. Uh, and they're also – I always loved running. As a, in, in, it's always just been a base of my training. Uh, yeah. uh, running has uh, the same freedom – the same element of freedom as, as windsurfing. You could go left, you can go right. Uh, there's no like speed limits. <laughs> so at least you're not going to cross it. the speed yeah. limit, right? And you can explore, <laughs> right? And you can, uh, so obviously you're, in windsurfing, you are a little bit depending on the wind, but you could you could basically train 
whenever you want. Um, mm. And with, with running, you can do that even more. It's just picking up and going. And there was no, as a, at that time, there was no equipment. That it was, windsurfing was a lot, was very uh, equipment heavy. When I was mm. traveling, uh, I was traveling with 300 kilos uh, overweight uh, in the airport, which is like huge, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, so just that with with traveling with your uh, with your uh, running shoes uh, would was very easy and uh, my brother lives in New York and uh, mm-hmm. I thought okay New York uh, I want to visit him and uh, let me try to run a marathon I asked him if he could get me in <laughs> he could not uh, but at that time the the it wasn't that e- difficult to get in I think um, yeah. so I ran I ran the, the New York marathon I was charging for because I heard from from other runners uh, that a three hour sub three hour that would be a respectable time absolutely I said, okay this is what i'm gonna charge for uh, <laughs> and uh i started training in my just i was just running in my board shorts and my cotton tank uh, and i realized on the long run that i needed a uh, performance wear right because mm-hmm. i start getting shafting uh around the waist and uh yep. and i thought okay i better get into some running gear mm. and and so so in that 2007 i walked into the local specialized running shop in uh, in Copenhagen, and and uh, I was very surprised to see how they were trying to sell running at that time. Uh, coming from Quicksilver being the yeah. pinnacle of of um, lifestyle sports, I would say at that time, uh, selling the dream mm-hmm. of surfing uh, with big pictures, uh, open arms, and good vibes, and just that yeah. whole. Med- as a positive attitude, right? Uh, yeah. Coming into the running store, wide walls, uh, clothing hanging, this and that. There are no pictures, uh, no no real heroes. Or the guys, as a, at that time, I guess running was also more introvert kind of sport. Um, mm-hmm. And I thought, okay, this, this is not how I see myself. Uh, and, and I think we can present this in a different way. And mm-hmm. so for a couple of years just sidetrack for a couple of years i was just yeah what do you call it i wouldn't say complaining but i just said hey why don't running sell themselves in a different way it's it's, it's such a nice sport it's so accessible it's it's for mm-hmm. the rich and the poor it's, it's like it has no boundaries why why don't mm. just be more extrovert more welcoming and uh, why is it all mm. about the suffering um mm. And so That's sidetrack, so, so I get the clothing, I buy the, I, I buy the performance gear and I go training and I, I run that marathon. And I knew when, the, when I was on the starting line, I was not going to do the three hours. So I did, I did 319. Uh, obviously, then uh, as my competitive driver said, hey, I need to do that again. I, I know exactly <laughs> what I did wrong. I need more long yeah. runs. I go to the local um, run club. Uh, they have those Sunday training for the Copenhagen marathon which was, so the, New York is in autumn. Their the first marathon in uh, the, the Copenhagen marathon is in spring, giving me all winter to train. So I joined up every Sunday for those uh, long runs. And that's where I met fantastic people. Uh, it was a whole new thing for me to to do sports and talk on the go. I mean, <laughs> winter obviously is very hard to communicate on the water. Uh, it's more yeah. like screaming a little bit of uh, and waving uh, and just yeah. encouraged uh, so the thing about running a long run, whether it's been a one hour, or a one and a half or two hours, uh, just talking about everything from politics to sports to how's your day was just very uh, opening for me, right? There was, uh, and yeah, so I, I got some some good friends uh, until to, still today. We are running together whenever we have time. Um, yeah. uh, so I guess that that really opened up. So the, the competitiveness of, of wanting to get that sub three hours in, uh, but subsequently meeting people and and uh, and just f- fell in love with running and 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 i guess that runner's high thing uh yeah. so in 2008 i cracked the, that that spring i i cracked the three hours what happens you oh, want to nice. go faster you want to go faster <laughs> so i went back to new york to to uh to see uh, and i was try- wanted to charge 248 the four zero uh pace and uh, i didn't do that but i did the three hours i went back to copenhagen and said okay i want to do the two 248 and i did the 248 <laughs> and then uh, i think in autumn i went to berlin uh to to to, to do it uh, and then it goes right that's amazing. Side sidetrack on that one. Uh, like I said, I was I was working 
in seven in seven i was working with rip curl i think oh uh, yeah okay uh, i was just i i was just i was actually i think i just just around i was just about stopping my uh, so i've been with quicksilver which i was sponsored by when i was windsurfing and after i finished my master's uh i got the job at at, at, at quicksilver mm-hmm. went into rip curl and i was there for three or four years uh, taking care of rip curl in denmark um and wow. then uh, at that time, I always been entrepreneurial, so sidetracked on that one. I did uh, junior camps for windsurfing. I, I've, I had my own website around oh. windsurfing uh, established in 1999. <laughs> so, so that was that was pretty early uh, website. That's amazing. Uh, that is early. Uh, there was a forum, forum-based uh, communication. All right, uh, that you would have people Incredible. you never saw, but you know that you knew them by their forum name, right? Yes, the good uh, old days. Yeah, it was really nice. But uh, so I, I, I came to that. Uh, so I think in eight, nine, something around that, uh, I wanted to, to to do something different outside the windsurfing. I've always been known as surfer last, I would say. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I was like, let me try to do something else. And an opportunity came up with a, with a friend to do a design company. And uh, where he was, he was doing the form shapes, where I was doing the pitching uh, in terms mm. of getting – brands on board that that my friend there should should do the, the design for okay and i think in that thing it was just around the financial crisis right starting up there mm. in 2008 so it's, it was very hard to open up doors um yeah and so we were we were struggling for a couple of years to to do to, to do that uh my friend was obviously doing his passion uh for me it was more about trying new things um and i realized I need to go back in sports. It's if 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 I should be broke, I'd rather be doing sports uh, because that's where my heart <laughs> belongs. Uh, yeah, that's good. Um, yeah, so we split up, and and he continued, and uh, and I was like set up for okay, what what is my next chapter in life? And uh, and he was he was actually the one encouraging. So you're always complaining about uh how lame that industry a running industry is and uh why don't you take everything you learn from the surf culture and, and put it into running and, and i think that was pretty much was ignited um uh wow. the, the whole say sky adventure uh so in in so say sky is i would say the first products is 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 out in in 13 uh okay. i started working very seriously about um Say Sky in 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 the summer of twelve, but I have my first notes uh, basically from eleven. Uh, hmm. It took me some time to get going. First of all, uh, like, did I actually do it? Did I think there was room for for a small brand? There, there, there was no small brands. There was either the bigger brands, uh, we all know them, uh, and then the other ones would be. Um, price point brands you can say private label just cheap brands there wouldn't be high performance brands as a small brand Mm -hmm. um so obviously uh, i was thinking about that challenge and again you see that in fashion it's all the smaller brands making the the, the trends uh nobody is looking at the h&m uh to get the the latest uh, trends so so why Mm -hmm. why do we think that these big Tank ships uh, can 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 move around. They're getting those uh, cultural elements, right? That they, they have so yeah. many other sports to take care of as well. So, so these are the things I was I was tumbling around, and um, I had a small comeback into the Olympic in in London. Uh, didn't hmm. I qualify, but I didn't get in. Uh, so, so, so I missed out. And basically, when I drove home that May May twelfth, when I drove home from France, uh, uh, knowing that I was not going to to London two months later, uh, I started up, um, say sky and, uh, wow. in Denmark we have, um, I'm happy that uh, today I'm happy that I didn't go to Olympics because that probably opened, had probably opened up other doors. Right. And then, yeah. uh, um, That's I know, then I would be dancing. I don't know. In Denmark, we have a, 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 a program. Everybody is watching every Friday is called uh, crazy about dancing or something where they take in the uh, kind of, I wouldn't call it yeah celebrity, but but because the show has been going on for so many years, yeah, and we are only five million people, you're getting really C and D rank uh, celebrities. And so as the joke <laughs> is that I, I will probably be dancing that show if yeah, some, yeah, and there's still time. I bet you could probably still get on there. <laughs> no, no, but uh, anyway, so so I'm really happy that uh, yeah, my life has turned out that that at, so say sky has been yeah. Taking so what, what was your yeah. very first product? Was your very first product like? 
an attempt to solve a problem like, oh, I, if I'm going to ever release one, it needs to, was it a, a design thing? You wanted it to be better looking? Was it a function thing? What what was on your mind with that first product? It was, it was, a style, it was definitely a style thing. Uh, so I wanted to create a high performance brand, uh, but, but taking into consideration more style and style in terms of not necessarily some people say more cool uh, as a, so for me it's more about a, a style that fitted my identity uh, in mm. terms of uh, yeah. being more fashion street uh, uh, aware i would say yeah. uh, I, I normally said in the start i said so whenever i wash my running clothing i wanted to be very close to my my everyday clothing um mm. So so yeah. so I was trying actually I was trying to take away, so, so, so sort of hide the performance, um, and and that was giving me a bit of troubles in the start uh, because people thought that it wasn't a high performance, uh, and coming from a Scandinavian country, we are trying to. to as a, Scandinavian design is about simplicity and minimalism and cutting away all the BS, right? So yeah. so so so. Whenever we did the expos the first times, so I did. The, I started as a one man army. Uh, mm-hmm. People was like, "Is this performance? Is this performance wear?" And it's like, "Yeah, hell yeah!" Is uh, <laughs> um, as I told, I run hard in this, but it looks yeah. good. Yeah, thanks, thanks. Uh, oh, today we're using a super complex yarn from uh, all over the world, uh, but a lot from Japan. So, 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 and mm-hmm. and and some of the fabric is 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 just too niche. To, to fit in the, the bigger brands. Uh, so, 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 yeah, like I said, they're too niche. Um, yeah. So I would definitely, uh, anyway. Um, but the first product we made was T-shirts, shorts. I, I guess our shorts is a little bit uh, less wide in the legs because uh, mm-hmm. I didn't really want to, at, at that time, I, 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 I was still the surfer and I didn't, I cared about my long board shorts and uh, and I didn't want to run in split shorts because my son, my legs has never have any sun, uh, you know, that high up. <laughs> so it, looked, it was looking pretty strange when I was running in, uh, in split shorts. So, so let's, let's make me, let, let's make them a little bit longer. Uh, and then as a, as today is called the, the pace and the two in one shorts in, in our products. They, they have not been changed since, uh, since we started. Wow. They're called five inch, but they, in fact, they're not five inch because they are set out. I just made a mark on my leg where I wanted them. So they are, <laughs> they were, and uh, I guess a part of the success of Say Sky is also that because I knew any, I knew, I didn't know anything about apparel design when I started, but luckily I was sample size. Yeah. So, so it wasn't that hard for me and, and the factory was helping me and, hmm. uh, and so on. So, 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 so again, I hope that the, the at least I think also now that we haven't changed the the, the, the shorts for, for for eleven years that yeah they it, they they were solid when they came out I think yeah um, but uh, yeah so they have like four point seven inch I think um, <laughs> I love that so <laughs> one observation have, yeah yeah well, I was just going to say an observation that I make about Copenhagen is that there is a deep connection with Japan and. I seems like it's a design thing. There's like a minimalism. There's some sort of connection that Copenhagen has with Japan. So since you mentioned that, and it seems like it's expressed some, and you know, and how you're designing your clothes, how um, would you characterize the connection between Copenhagen and Japan? Yeah, but they, they, I think again, both the countries in terms of design and design furniture and so on is is about um, minimalism and, and simplicity. Yeah, but also not forgetting. Uh, was it as a in Denmark we have the hygge, which is like the coziness of it, and I guess in, as a Japan I don't know if it's come the, the feng shui feng shui as a, the, the, just good vibes when you step into a room, right? Yeah. So in that regard, there's definitely some, some similarities uh, in terms of, of design, even though our, our cultural backgrounds is 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 is, is very different. Um, yeah. But when uh, I I talked to um, Brees Partouche about. Um, satisfy running at some point because mm-hmm. he's coming out of Paris and it's, yeah. you know, what does it mean to be uniquely Paris in, in your clothing design? What does it mean to be uniquely American in your clothing design? And Bree said in Paris, it's just, you know, mm-hmm. luxury is, is ingrained. That's what it means to be Parisian is to think luxury. And so that comes out in his design yeah. for you. What I love about say sky, when I see it, like, and you just pointed to it, like it's the sort of stuff you could wear it for a run and you could wear it like 
just around town. And it's, way and it's more, really cool. not way more, but we are democratic. Uh, so, so, so our, that's also why H and M, uh, IKEA, and so on. Mm. Uh, so, so we, the, the Scandinavian people is not is about usable things, and I think that's mm. uh, again back to the minimalism and the and and and, and simplicity. So. We, we, we we care about also the, the the usability of the things. So if you're designing a chair, it needs to be be nice to sit in. It cannot just yes. be be for the for the chair of its own sake. Um, yeah. So we try, and then somehow it needs to be affordable. I mean, we as a, our social program is is that as, as you know with the um, the welfare state and so on that that as a, and again it goes in with the say sky. My say my dream with say sky is of course to make very nice products, uh, but again, uh, I still want to have this. And I know the sales guy is still is still pricey compared to some of the private labels. If you walk into some of the, I said the ones who's really targeting price, but but we want to make a decent product that can that can la- last long, and but still also that student can uh, can afford. But of course, mm-hmm. of course, we're also making uh, three L jackets that were fully seamed and so on, where it's it's just not for everyone because uh, it's just too expensive, but. It's a damn nice product. And, they are. Uh, it, and uh, I think one of the things that stands out is also your, your prints, like what you, the, the design that's, that's on them. And so like, even for those who are, who are watching and they see just like the design behind you, those wooden slats, like, you know, my observation of Denmark and, and you're kind of giving me some better language for this is that you don't waste, you don't waste space. No. You know, you don't waste thing there's not a place on the shirt or a design that you would put out that's just there to fill space everything is intentional and i think of all the places i've ever been i've never been to japan but of all the places i've traveled to the world copenhagen does the best job of every inch matters every like coffee collective if you walk like i love (laughs) I, i office out of the coffee collective in carlsberg most of the time and it's just your coffee shop they're just stunning every inch matters and i feel like you know, looking at your patterns and your designs and stuff like that, yeah. that, you know, you're, you are, exp- you are an expression of, of Copenhagen. And I would say, uh, of, of course, also so a lot of our design and also the, a lot of the design we got recognized for uh, in, and still are, is of course, some of our prints. And like I said, as a, we are a performance brand. And, and if you are performance driven, you would most likely turn up to some races. And for me, the races is our party. <laughs> and when you go to the party, as a, sometimes we want to dress up, right? We want to have that peacock effect, and uh, and oh, I uh, like that. I said, we take we take our sports serious, but we don't take ourselves that serious, right? So 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 it's all right to have the Hawaii shirt on, right? Uh, it doesn't mean <laughs> that you have to wear the Hawaii shirt every day, right? But yeah. now and then, uh, of course, you should bring out uh, a bit of uh, happiness. Otherwise, uh, you would end up uh, being uh, yeah, all gray. Who, yeah, who wants to be all gray as all the time? <laughs> <laughs> I love that showing up to the party, the peacock effect. You want to look? You look nice. Yeah, yeah I, that, I, all of those things. Like I, I ran around Fredericksburg Park a lot, and, and and I'm not exaggerating. There would be a day where all 50 runners that I saw would have Say Sky mm-hmm. on on their shorts, on their shirt, on their hat, and a lot of people who are wearing the shorts were also wearing the shirt mm-hmm. at the same time. So like you really have been adopted by copenhagen clearly i'm not telling you something you don't know but no are there other nice markets <laughs> what's that it's still nice to hear <laughs> yeah are there other markets like are, are you and this is just my ignorance like you you mm. clearly are in denmark that makes sense yeah. are, are you in sweden are you in norway are there other markets that you've targeted and, and that yeah. you've had had adoption so the whole as a, again also coming from denmark um we have five maybe 5.5 million people so if you want to create something you need to work together with other people uh, that that reflects the Denmark's engagement in in the EU but also on a broader level that we need to expand we need to live on export uh, things and and so for me it's never been about creating a brand for the for for, for Denmark but creating an international brand mm. uh, also being a niche brand i was dreaming about people logging into the website as a sitting in Seoul sitting in uh, mm. Seoul Lake City and say hey I'm going to be the one uh, showing up to my next run with uh, a say sky. And then people's going to ask me, what, what is that? Uh, and then say, Hey, but that's that brand from Denmark. I found on the internet. That was my whole dream mm. back to that forum. Yeah. 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 Back to, thing, you're, you, right? you, were, you were ahead of your time on being connected to the world. In yeah, that way. So, but um, so today as a day, the Danish market is around 35% of our total uh, turnover. Oh. So, so it's not as a, I would say, 
that's one of the things I'm proud of is that if we look at a, a full year circle, we'll probably be sending products out to around 60, um, 50 to 60 countries around the world because we ship wow. worldwide. Uh, Germany, uh, UK being our th- um, uh, second and third, Japan okay. coming in strong uh, oh, cool. as, as, as fourth, uh, yeah. Due to we have a very we have a very uh, nice uh, um, distributor out there who understands how we want to grow awesome. things, and then uh, US is coming in. Um, that's great. Yeah, so that's good. And then yeah, it goes down. But the, that's the, the, the that's the the big five. Um, so are you direct to consumer in all of these markets, or do you have a retail strategy? So we want to have retail. I definitely believe that that uh, brick and mortar has a place in, uh, especially when we're talking about lifestyle sports. Uh, yeah. We're only targeting uh, specialized uh, retailers, uh, so they mean that they need to have staff that can to talk about it. I wouldn't say educate, but you can just walk the talk and talk to you. So when you walk Absolutely. in, uh, if it's a Danish store. Uh, and you run a, and you ask about Copenhagen Marathon, they would know the full course and uh, what to look after, right? Uh, mm. I don't want to have somebody who's walking in and say, oh, I, but I'm not running, but yeah, this guy is over there. You can just, uh, uh, so we want to, so we want to embrace culture. I said that, that I think that's, uh, we are a community and cultural uh, driven company. We want to walk the talk. And we want to um, we want to make sure that the people we are trying to to enroll in our retail program is also making the pie bigger. Uh, uh, so yes, we so we have retail uh, wholesale as a, we have retail in the, in the U.S. Uh, we have it in as a, in quite a lot of countries, but that's incredible. Not everyone is uh, having the same eagerness to 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 bring in smaller brands as uh, as we do. That's right. um, uh, so, yeah. so that's definitely a challenge in the in the retail space, yeah. and that's REI, why we that's why we are strong T 2 C. Yeah, REI is a, a, a major retailer in in America, and they've had problems. I mean, they during COVID, and this kind of transitions into my next questions that mm-hmm. I'm curious about. But you know, during COVID, there was this outdoor boom, and so there was a lot of sales, and so. REI bought a ton of inventory and then they had too much inventory. And, uh, you know, that's, you know, one of the problems that we had, but there's, there's this book, uh, born to run very popular in America. I don't know if it came, I don't know how big it was worldwide. Uh, Uh, I know the title. I haven't read it, but I, uh, yeah. Okay. Highly recommend wonderful book, but in in it, he recounts the history of booms within running. Mm -hmm. Uh, and it's kind of a small recounting of that history, but you know, in America after 9-11, September 11th of 2001, that crisis, we had a big mm-hmm. boom in running. Anytime there's oh, something yeah. that happens in society that makes us question, why are we working so much? We should be enjoying life more. That has yeah. always led to an uptick in more people running. So oh, we yeah. had that in the 08, 09 crisis. We had more running. Another smaller crisis, 13, 14, boom in running. And then covid COVID was a big time. Again, REI kind of got caught on its heels uh, because they had too much inventory, but it's because so many people were buying. Yeah. W- what was your experience with that? As uh, I mean, I mean, there's obviously lots of challenges with COVID, but was there a boom? Did you see a boom in running and, and consumers buying your products? Well, you could definitely see, like, I also heard about the booming and, 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 uh, but I think one of the successes and why we're still independent uh, until today uh, uh, is that that we've been taking baby steps every year in the right direction, pretty stable organic growth. Um, so we didn't really ramp up uh, the inventory uh, during that uh, that time, and mm. uh, so so we were actually keeping our numbers. And it, it could be that we were those years we were saved uh, that the numbers would have been uh, bad. Uh, it's hard to say, but I can just uh, tell you that they were reflecting pretty much what we've done all the time. Um, and at the same time, coming back 2022, 23, as a, our biggest problem has been that we have we had low, uh, low stock. It's actually mm-hmm. been, yeah, uh, what you say. So we could probably have been, yeah, we could we could definitely have been selling more if we had more stock. But at the same time, we're in a very good place, and that uh, I'm happy to say that also to my team that uh, yeah, that uh, it's not like. Oh, we thought that it was going th- through the sky. Um, so these guys, they can walk in and they, a, we have enough uh, 
fuck you leverage. Uh, sorry, uh, <laughs> you can say uh, whatever you want. Well, uh, lever, uh, leverage, right? So, so yeah, we don't have to. So, so we don't. There's no one who could come and tell us to to open up this and that store or mm. uh, do yeah. make this or that uh, pant because they think they can sell a lot of it or so on. So, so, so I like the, I like the freedom. Yeah, I think you'll always, uh, you know, just just as an outsider, just. You know, I'm, my, my past is, and you know, I've, I've opened a lot of businesses in my life. I've been an entrepreneur. I, I've only been in trail running for like two years, but doing this sort of media thing. Um, and so I love looking at business models, thinking about business models. I taught a little bit at the University of Utah about entrepreneurship. And so just observationally, I look at what you've chosen, to, what you chose to do there with keeping inventory reasonable. And, you know, 10 years from now, you'll still be probably real happy yeah. <laughs> with that. I mean, everyone, you're probably real happy right now. Uh, cause a lot of people are hurting because of the too much inventory that's still kind of out there in the, in the yeah. market, but, yeah. um, what a great choice. Ah, it's that's good. Uh, yeah, I, I, I'm just, I'm, but say sky is a fairy tale and I'm just so grateful for, yeah. for what we've been doing and, um, yeah, that's great. What well, what would you say is the, um, like, all right, when, when you're kind of dreaming with your team and I'm not looking for insider secrets here, but I'm just saying like, Hey, you dream like, Hey, wouldn't it be great if this happened or that happened? Is there like any like big dream that you have right now? Or is there anything that you think about? Or, or are you more of a, you know, what's the next step I need to take? Are you a where 10 years from now kind of thinker or, you know, what's the dream? What's the hope for say sky right now? I, is it so, so with my background with Quicksilver, um, Mm. I've seen I, I've seen what what growth also does to a brand when they're yes. opening up doors or opening up uh, flagship stores far away from where where the the, yes. the, the the actual sport is going on. Like a, as a whether it's been opening a store as a, a boat riders club in 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 uh, Times Square or uh, they were also in. Um, uh, what is it called in uh, in Paris? Uh, sorry, I just lost that. The main street mm-hmm. in Paris, uh, Champs Elysees. Champs Elysees, exactly yeah. right. That, that, that so they had shops there, right? And far away. Uh, so so obviously, when you when you draw crowds in and and expanding your uh, your um, your customer group into people who who's maybe not surfing but wants to 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 be looked at as a surfer, right? As a yeah. Then the core is going to disappear, and and I will I will always mm. try to 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 protect us of being for for being as a, we want to be an a, a, what do you call it a lifestyle indicator, right? That that when you see a guy in the airport or a woman wearing say sky, uh, yes. that okay that that person must be a runner, otherwise they wouldn't know this brand. Mm. And and that 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 is one of the things I, I really care about, and and obviously that is easier to do when we are independent because uh, if you have a lot of investors, uh, some of these guys, uh, yeah, they might want to push you for getting a return on their money. Um, but but obviously, so you never know. But 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 uh, so sometimes I wish we had maybe a little bit more muscle and being a little bit more risk carefree or whatever you say that uh <laughs> but at the same time as, as long as we do baby steps in the right direction giving Gosh. us more muscle we're just talking about okay do we want to go to the expo in uh, uh for london marathon it, it's such an expensive uh, travel and also because they're yeah. not in the eu so it's a hassle getting the, the now that they left uh, yeah. getting the products over there getting the products behind uh, back uh so these are the things it's more it's 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 smaller down to earth uh problems uh mm-hmm. um that i'm dreaming about solving um uh but again um hopefully we also here as we're here for the long run that's the thing as that's what yeah. i also say to the team as as a and uh we just want to i I, I would just yeah, want to go run. As, as a, as a, as a, um, well, I think so. You, you, uh, okay. Is my math right? Eleven years. Eleven years, right? So, so I guess I probably say that we were we were the first ones to really go on that first wave. You had yeah. on and and Hoka going first in the footwear, but in in terms of apparel, uh, we were the first one to bring out that small niche brand trying to do yes. trying to run down an altered path. Uh, yes. and you go after the boom there's been a second wave uh, so 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 the running industry has definitely been moving over the last I don't know yeah 11, 11 13 I don't know when it is I think on is from 10 uh, so let's mm. say 15 oh, really? years right? 
Okay. Yeah, yeah. I would say what I admire um, about what you're what you're saying with your business model is that you you say there's baby steps, and so you know now you're 60 countries, but you're 11 years in, and so maybe every year has felt a strain of growth, but never. And maybe, maybe you can correct me if I'm wrong. Maybe it's been no, some no, years no, where it no, felt no. like too much, but was every year, did it feel like you were growing in a manageable amount? Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and I think it is, I guess we've probably been growing pretty much 30% every year. Uh, okay. And, and um, so Fantastic. that means that we are doubling every third year, right? Uh, yeah. Or a little bit before three years, but, but uh so obviously the chunks of, of growing today is a lot bigger than growing um, right. after thirty percent now years, is right? yeah 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 yeah, yeah. Sure. yeah. Uh, so now it, it's a like I said uh, so if you're growing thirty percent now it means that we have to hire maybe five six new people where before it was just half a person right. <laughs> so that, yeah that that gives us some challenge being in Copenhagen again with a small yeah but it's a it would be easier if we were in uh, in Germany I think but. Again, yeah, you always think life is easier somewhere else. Sure, and in, in being in Copenhagen and in Denmark, does the government, um, uh, you know, like capital, like when you're growing twenty to thirty percent, you you've probably got to have still some capital to be able to do that. Maybe, maybe not. But like, what's yeah, the but like? How's I the borrowing like? Like, what's what's it like? Does does the government like support its entrepreneurs? Uh, I say, uh, not. Not really, actually. There's a lot of discussion. If, if we are, some say we are very strong in entrepreneurial, and some say we are not strong enough. Right? I guess there's always, but yeah. uh, we, we 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 always been uh, doing everything ourselves. Um, I think w- our luck has been that we've been very strong online from from the start. Yeah, that's good. Uh, so that gave us a, a, a lot of muscle. Uh, so we've never really been depending on a, a, a specific uh, retailer. Um, Oof, so I think great. that's. And then, like I said, I just I did everything myself in the start. I said everything from building the web page to sending out the packaging. If yes. the, if I saw uh, if I saw order around three miles of Copenhagen, I would deliver it myself. So 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 really? yeah, yeah, yeah. So so yeah, because I was I was like, okay, that's that's one meal, right? And then you would go. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> So, I, and I guess that's also founded in the country, uh, our culture today that that we fix, we mostly fix things ourselves. We don't, we do things in house, um, mm. and then, yeah, it's just wow. Yeah, I don't know. Just I love yeah. that. All right, so <laughs> as we sort of get close to wrapping up here, I, I'm curious what what is the what do you want the world to know? We're assuming that the world is listening to this podcast, but let's assume they were. What do you like? What do they need to know about Say Sky? Like things that I hear that I next time I talk about Say Sky to somebody, I'll say mm-hmm. certain things like, "Oh yeah, the owner he he was a windsurfer in northern you know Denmark." Yeah. Like there's you got good story you yeah. know in so many different places. But what do you think? Like if someone were to just take away one sentence from learning about Say Sky for the first time today, what do you hope that they would yeah. tell people? What do you ho- hope they would say about Say Sky? As a, as a, the thing that we make respectable as a high performance uh, running gear, uh, and we care about the culture and and uh, we care about the community and and and, and trying to uh, influence, but uh, also absorb. And as a, so we are, so a, we are walking the talk that that that, mm. that we are there f- because we have an, uh, a passion for 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 the sport. Um, obviously, we want to sell products, but. At the same time, we want to try to sell it uh, in a place where where we can, what you say, make the pie bigger. Is it, is it, is it, yeah. is it, is it, so, and like I said, that that we are an authentic brand, uh, not not really trying to compromise. Did we? We are, we are good guys, <laughs> <laughs> but everybody wants to be good guys, I guess, right? Yeah. But uh, hopefully, we can do it in a, that that we pick up the phone uh, when when people have a, a as a. It has to go through emails, but that we are writing back to people uh, responding if they have a claim or if they want to know a certain size and all these things. When you meet us on the on the expos, that they, they feel welcoming. Uh, when you met, if you're meeting me at a at a race, that uh, that uh, that they had the time to say hello and it's, yeah. it's these things, right? That 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 um, that we are in love with running. Yes, well, I don't know. It's, 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 it sounds sounds cheesy, but no, it's but clear. It's, 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 but but uh, um, 
we're here it's for also them. cool when the market the like when copenhagen or even when i was up at Frederiksberg running like mm. to see people wearing it like they they own it you know like to yeah. run into say sky to me as an outsider if it yeah. is like it's copenhagen like you know yeah. like you wear it and they're kind of owning it there yeah. and now outside of the market when i when i see it like uh, here on a run, like along the Seine here in Paris, I see it. And it's like, to me, I still think of Denmark because I love Denmark so much. I yeah. think if anything I could, you know, people could take away is that Scandinavia has given us lots of interesting things in America. We've got Ikea, we've got Fjallraven, okay. we've got all the, these things from the greater Scandinavia. Yeah. But the, you know, like from Copenhagen, it's McKellar beer yeah, <laughs> and say sky, you know, like those two things uh, are, are really cool things to associate with the city. But I hope that also that, that you would view it as, as a, yeah, maybe our inheritance is, is a, our, our origin is, is from Copenhagen, but that, that we want to embrace a worldwide community. And that's why we call yeah. it the, the worldwide tribe. And, and, and hopefully when you meet somebody, uh, uh, whether it's back as a going back to Utah and and doing a run and you see somebody wearing Seiska, maybe you would walk over to that guy and say, "Are oh, you wearing Seiska?" And and then you would you would uh, talk to each other and in the yes. end, uh, hopefully also Seiska can make the world smaller. Mm. Uh, it, and 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 I always said that when you ask me, "So what's my dream?" My dream is actually sitting on a bench in New, in uh, Central Park and looking at two runners wearing Seiska crossing each other. And they would either nod, or smile, or something. It's just acknowledge each other as, as saying hi, right? Just like when you you're driving in Land Rover or whatever, or the bus, or the yeah. you meet when you meet people out as a on the countryside. As a people would say hello, right? Of course, you cannot say hello to everyone on the on the, as a whatever street it is uh, in the U.S., which is super busy, but. Yeah, when you, I think you st there's still room for saying hi to somebody wearing the fellow brand that, that you support. That um, yeah, saying hello to each other. Yeah, well, I'll, I'll say that's the perfect place to end. I think that that mm -hmm. is you know just as stunning from a from a brand standpoint, from a running standpoint, to say that a, the, the a win for you is to see people connecting because of your brand. That yeah. the brand, yeah, yeah, yes, yeah. it's high performance. Yes, it's beautiful. Yes, it's functional. But all of those, those things come together to make up this brand that would bring people could bring people together, and then that's the dream that you have. I think that's a that's yeah. an Sitting awesome. Selling the products, awesome giving goal. us muscle to bring people together. That's it, and that's why we do all the events as well. So good. Yeah. Well, <laughs> Lars, I'll I'll attach all of the socials and stuff in the show notes of the podcast. But man, yeah. I'm just really grateful for your time. You taking the time to do this with me today, and um, hope to interact with you in person some point. Come to an event, or or see you out if you're in America, or if you're in France, anytime soon. Yeah, yeah. Thank you very much, and uh, again, I appreciate the time here and the voice and the the, the muscle you have to bring out the, the message is uh, is so much appreciated. Uh, thanks. My pleasure. See you next time. Welcome to the world.